Teresa asks, would you use GMB Insights over a paid service such as Bright Local? And um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep it out of full screen view just so I can type in here with you guys on the calls. So um, would you use GMB Insights over a paid service such as Bright Local? And the big resilient answer is a fuck no. Yes, Joe just swore big time. At the end of the day, folks, I need you guys to understand that that when it comes to keyword data, when it comes to um, when it comes to running your business and and keeping track of your KPIs, you should not be leaning on Google exclusively to keep track of your most important KPIs especially historically when it comes to you know keyword search volume on a local level when it comes to google my business insights are freaking trash they're not accurate even remotely okay so i want to give you guys a, a real life example of this so that you guys can can make sure that this sinks in okay but i need you first and foremost just to take away that you should never be relying on gmb insights Okay, so practical, real use case, okay? Um, there is a keyword phrase, one keyword phrase, that according to Google's keyword tool, in one city, in one location, that keyword phrase um, had a search volume of 50 searches a month, okay? When... We rank for that keyword and that keyword shows up and it's ranking inside of Google Maps and it's like the only keyword phrase that it's ranking for. And the, the reason for that is because it was like a, like a really close to exact match domain or keyword phrase. So if the keyword phrase is ABC Dental, the domain for example is like abcdental.com, okay? So like it was ranking for that like quickly but wasn't ranking for anything else, okay? So the search volume on ABC Dental in this example, right, is 50 searches a month, okay? We rank for it, right? We rank for it, we rank for it using a GMB, we rank in the three pack. Um, I think when we did this test, we were ranking number two in the three pack. So we weren't number one, we had like no freaking reviews yet. Um, the, the number one competitor had like the five star snippet showing up, and let's call it that they had 40 reviews, right? So they're like the dominant person there in the three pack. So being below them with no reviews, like we're not gonna get a whole lot of traffic, right? So keyword volume is 50, we're ranking number two, but we like have no presence almost because we're just getting like shadowed by the, the top competitors in the three pack. So we, we rank and, um, and I look inside of Google My Business Insights, and this is like months into us ranking. And I look at it, and it's saying that we're getting roughly 50 phone calls per month. Okay, that is what they're reporting. Anybody wanna have a guess, when we looked at call tracking, how many calls we were actually receiving on a monthly basis? Frankie says 100. What's up, Frankie Allen? Good guess. Dennis says 100. Folks, over 200 phone calls a month. And when I look at those 200 phone calls, just to be clear, those were like 200 raw, or I'm sorry, those were 200 unique phone calls, meaning anybody that called back multiple times was already filtered out of that number. Okay, so gr like gross, I'm sure it was more like 250 or 260. So yes, I swore, yes, I got explicit, but at the end of the day, folks, like you, you cannot put all of your eggs in one basket and, and Google, uh, Google Maps and, and Google Keyword Tool and Google uh, Keyword Volume on a local level, like I need you guys to understand, like fundamentally has been screwed for a really, really long time. And you should not be counting on that data or you're missing the boat completely. Frankie Allen says, oh my gosh, I need to set up call tracking. Yes, 100%. You got to set up call tracking, right? So let's talk about that now. So how do you do a good job 
of truly capturing that data, okay? So the way that you do a good job is inside of Google My Business, and I'm not gonna pull it up here, I can walk you guys through it step by step, just know that it's not on the screen, right? So inside of Google My Business, there is a place where you can edit your phone number. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to add another phone number and I want you to swap out the primary phone number and the additional phone number, okay? And what's gonna happen is the phone number that's showing inside of Google My Business and that people would click on to call is really your phone number, your tracking phone number, and so it'll replace the phone number that they use everywhere, like Yelp and before in the GMB and Yellow Pages, but that phone number is still going to be tied to that account and to that listing. And so Google knows, right, to keep it associated with your account. So if you've already got a site that's got citations and everything else and you're not starting from scratch, this is how you use call tracking without having to update all those freaking citations and deal with the tracking mess. Okay, good stuff. All right, fantastic. So guys, 100% of the time, okay, uh, just just err on the side of caution and that, that, that Google My Business Insights is gonna be wrong, right? Their data is gonna be wrong. The keyword tool is gonna be wrong. Uh, just make that assumption, please, moving forward. Okay, so then should you use a paid service such as Bright Local, then it's kind of the second part of the question. And so I would use 100% call tracking number one, but then number two, and that's like required, like I don't do anything without call tracking. And then number two, like Bright Local is good because Bright Local will understand Bright Local pulls in some data from like Google My Business Insights though. So I wouldn't be looking at Bright Local to provide me with the, the data inside their interface from GMB Insights, like that's retarded. We just said that that data wasn't very good, right? But what I would do is use GMB Insights to help me audit my Google My Business account and tell me what I should be doing that I haven't done already, right? So show me the issue, show me the opportunity, show me what to fix, okay? Is, is the first use case for Bright Local. The second use case for Bright Local, okay, is, is like the citation audits in general, and then all the other tracking tools third, that are inside of Bright Local. So Bright Local is who I use to this day to do local Google My Business rank tracking. Okay, so um, there are other platforms out there that frankly, like just being honest, I think do a little bit better than Bright Local in terms of the rank tracking piece. Um, but they're just like shiny object things and things that for me, I don't think really matter. Right, so uh, Bright Local kind of gives me the, the whole suite in one, so to speak, and, and so that's why I love Bright Local. Okay? And they're always updating the tool, they're in the trenches, they have a really good pulse of what's happening in the local market. 